Because I've reviewed over 60 mice, instead of a top 20, it's time for a top 40. My name is Zai and I've been playing Quake for over 18 years. Now, there are a few things you should know before watching this video. One, you should be trying to find the mouse that suits you best, not necessarily the best mouse. So watch the whole video if you have the time. All of these mice are very good in their own way. Two, you need to know your hand size. Please measure base to tip and then across from your thumb to your little finger, as shown in the picture. Three, to make this list, I've combined community feedback, my testing, and what I think is best. And I will update the website as new information and mice come out. Four, the list is based on first person shooters, but most mice can suit MOBAs as well. Five, while I have a lot of mice, I haven't tested them all. Go to the mouse reviews page on my website, and you can see if the mouse has been reviewed or not. Six, some people have an issue where they tilt the mouse before they swipe it. Most sensors lose track and spin out from this. If you have this problem, you need a mouse with the 3360, 3366, 3330, or 3389 sensor. And the 3988 and the 3989 aren't too bad either. If you like what I do, please subscribe and help me grow the channel, as that gets me more influence in the industry. I've already shared a lot of community feedback with the mouse companies, so your support means I can help them make better mice for you too. Every view, every like, every comment, and every subscription helps. Now let's get to the mice. I'll leave links on screen to the full reviews. They should open a new tab so you can click as many as you like. Just hit pause on each and watch later. I just want to give a quick shout out to Madcats for their RAT4. Unfortunately, it arrived late so I didn't complete the testing, but it has a very good optical sensor, only weighs 90 grams, and uses Omron switches. Let's begin. At number 40, we have an MMO MOBA mouse. The SteelSeries Rival 500. It tries to move some buttons around so they're not all on one side. Fairly comfortable shape, but it's a bit short and wide, so it may not suit palm grip for large hands. Its biggest downfall would be its weight, at about 129 grams. If they somehow made it around 100 grams, it could be used in a lot of FPS too, because it has a 3360 optical sensor. For the hand sizes, try to aim for the middle of the measurements. They're a rough guide, but hopefully they give you an idea. The Corsair Scimitar is also for MMO, but it's probably my favorite MMO mouse so far. At about 119 grams, it's still a bit heavy, but I was able to play Quake with it fairly well, which means it should be easy to play every other game. It's a comfortable shape and has great build quality. Definitely worth a look if you're an MMO player that also plays FPS casually. And it has a 3988 sensor. The Logitech G502 is one of the most popular mice around, and with good reason. It has a lot of great features, including the Infinite Scroll Wheel, a 3366 optical sensor, and buttons suited to all game types. However, for games like Quake, the shape is a bit awkward, and it's a bit heavy at around 125 grams, and you can only adjust it to be heavier. I really like it, but it's relatively low on the list when it comes to FPS, in my opinion. That said, this is a number one choice for a lot of people, so if you like it, that's great. Keep using it. It also has a G-Shift functionality, which essentially doubles the amount of buttons, so it could also suit MMO. It's an all-rounder. The Rival 700 is one I wanted for a long time. It would probably be in the top 10 if not for the weight and unnecessary features. You have tactile notifications and a replaceable sensor, but you shouldn't need to replace the sensor because it already has a 3360 in it. It feels high quality and it's a great mouse. I really wish it was lighter, about 100 grams instead of 137. Still, for people who like heavy mice and don't have huge hands, this could be a great choice. The Corsair Harpoon is an awesome mouse except for the shape and the sensor. It's lightweight at about 83 grams, has good build quality, and it's a good size for smaller hands. I think it should still suit some people though, because it's quite cheap, and I found that I could play really well with it. Not perfectly though. Suited to FPS and mobile. I used the Logitech G302 for 9 months and played very well with it, but the sensor can be made to spin out, the cable is a bit annoying, and the Logitech G303 is better. If it wasn't for the G303, I'd rank this much higher, so if you can afford that, obviously get that. But the G302 is still a good option as a small mouse. It has some of the best buttons around, and it only weighs about 88 grams. The Master Mouse Pro L should have been much higher on the list. The shape is great, buttons feel good, a 3360 sensor, and it's modular. The problems are that only the shell is modular, not the side buttons. It weighs 107 grams, and the build quality is lacking a little. With refinement, this could be one of the better mice around. Still worthy of a mention on this list, and I'm really liking the progress that Cooler Master are making. Speaking of companies making progress, Cougar are stepping up their game with the Revenger. Great shape, fairly good materials, good tension on the buttons, solid, and a 3360 sensor. For people who don't mind the weight of 111 grams, this is a great option, but it still needs some refining. 
Another great shape, the Gladius is similar to the Revenger except that it has some comfort grooves and better materials. I haven't spent much time with it yet, so consider this a bit of a prediction. It seems quite good in all departments, except the weight is a bit much at 119 grams. Asus only sent me a well used copy, so I'm not entirely sure what it's meant to be like out of the box. It does seem good though, including a 3988 sensor, so it's worth a look. The Corsair Sabre is a bit of a niche mouse, but it's relatively light at 99 grams, has good buttons, materials, and a 3988 sensor, and the overall Corsair quality. It's the shape that makes it niche. Not everyone likes wings, but if you like to have your fingers and thumb off the pad, this is probably the mouse for you. The Castor received a lot of hype. Nice materials, decent buttons, 99 grams, 3310 sensor, everything is pretty good. My issue with it is the unsafe shape. It kind of forces you to place your fingers in a certain way, and the left side has too great a ledge. It never felt right for me, even after a lot of use. But there are people who swear by it, so if you think it can suit you shape-wise, and don't mind the price, it's good. I rate the AVO 7000 higher, despite not being suitable to palm grip. Same myonix quality, it just feels better and in my opinion, it's a better shape even though it has side buttons on both sides. Similar specs, a bit heavier at about 104 grams. Its main problem is that there are more popular options out there because they have safer shapes. Otherwise a great mouse, really enjoyed using it. The G402 is still fairly popular. The weight is a bit much at 109 grams, but for a medium to large mouse, it's still okay. The easiest way to describe it is probably a G502 without the extra features, lighter and more suited to FPS. I debated putting these on one number, because the Cougar 300M and Cooler Master Alcor use the same shell. The Alcor is all plastic, the 300M is rubberized. I prefer the 300M, others prefer the Alcor. It's really up to you, the price, and what you can get. Otherwise they're basically the same. The 300M is a bit heavier at about 95 grams, while the Alcor is 88 grams. Overall though, they're both good options. The sensors aren't great, but they're usable, have good buttons, and a safe shape. Nothing special, nothing too bad, just plain, easy choices. The Rival 100 is the entry level rival. My main line when describing it is good, not great. Almost everything about it is good, but not great. It weighs about 92 grams, has good buttons, sensor is acceptable, but not great. The main appeal is that the shape is nice and safe, and is cheap. The V300 is a wild card. It has so many problems, sensor, build quality, about 99 grams, stiff cable, no support from Rapu, but I still love using it. I think it has the nicest buttons of all mice. It has a really nice rubber material, and the comfort grooves are perfect. It's cheap and probably not going to be sold much more, but I still wanted to give it a shout out, because I want more companies to take note of the positives. I hope we get more like this someday, and hopefully with better quality. I really enjoyed using the XN300, and at the time, it was one of the only cheap mice with a top sensor, the 3988. Unfortunately, my concerns about quality were right, and people have reported a fair few problems, even ones that I didn't have on mine. Still, if you can get a good one, this is a really fun mouse to use. Fairly good shape, good materials, weighs about 100 grams, and still not too expensive. I think the Rocket Cairo would be higher if it was lighter and had comfort grooves. It's the first modular mouse I used, meaning we actually get to choose if we want side buttons on either side. Really like the mouse, but the 100 gram weight and the imbalance does make it lose some points. I hope Rocket revisit this idea and improve it. A better sensor would also be appreciated. For those looking for an updated original Razer Abyssus, this may actually be your best option, that I've tried anyway. 3310 sensor, 84 grams, Everything feels pretty good, however I've only had it for a few days at this stage, and I have heard some build quality concerns, so check the review once it's done, but for now, the Asus Seeker is worthy of a recommendation. You might recognize the shape of the Cougar 450M from the SteelSeries Sensei, very similar basic shell, and unlike the Sensei, it has a 3310 optical in it. Unfortunately, I accidentally pressed the side buttons on the right, but other than it being a bit big for me, despite the green and glossy plastic, it's a great mouse and it's still fairly lightweight at 96 grams. The Fnatic Flick G1 was one of the first gaming mice that I loved using. The materials and overall feel is great. Where it struggles is the shape and the sensor implementation. Watch the review for more information of course, but all the specs are pretty much right, even the weight at about 93 grams. The Cougar Minos X3 is a new one. I haven't spent too much time with it, but it's a cheap mouse with an ambidextrous design, lightweight at about 88 grams, side buttons on the left only, 3310 sensor, and light buttons. Could be used for MOBA and FPS. My only issue so far is that it feels like it catches on the base sometimes. Maybe the mouse feet or shell. Need more time with it, but given how cheap it is, it's still worth a look and a high placing. 
If you really want to focus on aim, and you have a small to medium hand, the Abyssus V2 is great. The sensor isn't the best, but to make it spin out, I had to hurt my arm. You really do have to throw it that fast, so I don't think it will spin out in game. No side buttons, ambidextrous, could do with some comfort grooves, but it's lightweight at about 83 grams, and just a great mouse. The Logitech G900 is my most used. Why? Because it's by far the best all-rounder. The only reason I change from it is to play FPS. It's a wireless mouse with a 3366 sensor, ambidextrous design, modular side buttons, and it also has the Infinite Scroll Wheel, which is amazing for video editing. I refuse to edit without it now. For work alone, it's worth the price. And because it has G-Shift, you should be able to use it in MMOs as well. I played fairly well with it in FPS, but obviously, I do better with smaller mice, and ones that weigh less than 107 grams. The Rocket Comb Pure is a favourite among many, but hated by others because of the shape. It is a bit awkward, but I played well with it and really enjoyed using it. It also has easy shift function to double the amount of buttons. You could probably use it in all game types. Weighing about 95 grams, it's a good small to medium mouse. Just make sure you get one with the 3310 optical, not the 3090 optical or laser. I recommend the grey one, the Naval Storm, or the new black one. Now that the Death Adder Elite is out, you'd only buy the Chroma because you want to save some money. Everything is basically the same as the Elite, except it's using a 3989 sensor. So it's still a good mouse and worth a look, and it weighs about 99 grams. Again, we have mice so similar, I had to put them next to each other. There are some slight differences, which I explained in the Extrify M3 review. Otherwise, they're medium to large mice, both weighing about 104 grams, everything fairly high quality, including the 3310 optical. It just depends if you like the shape, which is why I put the Rival 300 slightly ahead. I think the flatter sides are better. If you want a wireless mouse just for gaming, the G403 wireless is the best around, except for MMOs. Where it beats the G900 is the shape and buttons, and it's 106 grams. I'm going to get to the G403 later, but for now, let's just say it has everything right. So if your hand is big enough and you don't mind the weight, this is a top recommendation. Here's a new one that I've been testing with Cooler Master. At the time of this video, it's not out. It should be out in early 2017 though, and it's using a 3330 optical. I had to ask them about it, because as far as I could tell, it's basically the same as a 3360. So no surprise to hear that it's actually a downgraded version, but I really can't tell. Here's my favorite highlight clip so far, showing my control of it. It tracks smoothly, it doesn't spin out, and it handles the tilt slam test too. To describe the mouse overall, it's like an Abyssus V2, but with comfort grooves and a better sensor. I'm still waiting on the final release, so you can expect this mouse to climb the ranks if it all goes well. For me, it's even better than the Zowie FK2, and at about half the price. It should be popular. Lightweight at 90 grams, a bit lacking on quality in some ways, but still amazingly good. Now, if you can afford the Logitech G303 over the G302, then of course get it. 3366 optical, 88 grams, some of the best buttons you'll find, great in MOBA and FPS, and pretty much the only issues are the scroll wheel feeling a bit cheap, the cable being thick and heavy, and some people don't like the diamond shape. It's still a top recommendation and a personal favorite. Definitely worth a look. The Logitech Pro is almost flawless. My only real complaint is about the sides. They need to be flatter, more like the G303. In fact, if you combine the two and updated the materials a bit, it would be a top 5 mouse. The materials are still good, 3366 sensor, about 85 grams, and buttons suitable to MOBA and FPS. Definitely one of the best mice, it's just the shape that causes it to lose some points. And the final mice that are so similar they get put together, they're about the same weight, the same shell and size, with the Revel being a tiny bit smaller than the DM1, and fairly well priced with 3360 sensors. And again, the shells are based on the very popular SteelSeries Sensei. Apparently, the Nixius Revel lacks a bit on quality, but the Dream Machine's DM1 is usually a bit more expensive. Nixius have been good with returns though, so it's up to you. I have no bias, I like them both. The ZA series is my least favourite of Zowie mice, because I'd prefer to use other mice with that kind of shape, but they're still great for what they are and fill a hole in the market, so they're worth a look. I only have the 12 and 13 here, but they weigh about 86 and 84 grams, so you can assume the 11 is a bit above that. 3310 Optical is still a top sensor, but the switches and the tough shell might cause issues with MOBAs. Zowie mice are usually better for FPS. 
Now the Death Adder Elite. Apparently it has a 3389 sensor, which is a modified 3360. I went over the improvements in the review, but needless to say for large hands, this is still one of the top recommendations. And even for smaller hands, it's one of the best and most popular MOBA mice too. I like the improved materials and overall feel, so I'm happy to continue recommending Death Adders. And it weighs about 96 grams. For first person shooters, the Zowie EC series is often the choice for serious players. I won't go into detail here, but the subtle design brilliance of Zowie is what puts them so high. They need to fix the side buttons, main buttons and scroll wheel, and upgrade to a 3360 sensor, but the shape is so good, I can forgive all that. Just a note, white logo is the older version, red logo is the new BenQ model. So these are now BenQ Zowie mice. As a rough guide, I suggest people with hands under 19.4cm go for the EC2A, which weighs about 95 grams. And over 19.5, go for the EC1A, which weighs about 98 grams. The mouse that made me switch from the EC2A is the Zowie FK2. The strange thing about it is that I was using palm grip for so long, but I had to switch to fingertip grip, and now I prefer it. Ambidextrous, fairly small, and just so easy to aim. Again, they need to fix the scroll wheel, put in a 3360 sensor, and separate the buttons from the shell. Other than that, the FK series is amazing, and it comes in three sizes. FK2 is small, FK1 is medium, and FK1 Plus is large. And from smallest to largest, they weigh 84 grams, 87, and 94. And the best mouse of 2016 is the wired Logitech G403. If your hand suits this mouse and you think the shape is right for you, then without a doubt it is the top recommendation. 3366 optical, 90 grams, adjustable by 10, nice materials, great buttons, great scroll. Everything about this mouse is amazing. It's a bit wide for me, otherwise I'd be using it as my main. Remember, no matter how good a mouse is, you need to get the one that's right for you. But as an overall recommendation, the G403 is the best at the time of making this video. Suitable to FPS, MOBA, and maybe even MMO with the G-Shift functionality, as long as you don't need too many buttons. So that's it. That's the top 40 for 2016. It's been a great year for mice, and 2017 should be even better. If you'd like to help support these videos, I'll leave the usual links in the description. Thank you for watching and helping me grow the channel, and as always, subscribe, like, and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.